In this video, the learner is going to analyze three measures to determine if they create a triangle. We did the activity for this in class already, so you should remember your rule uh, from what we did in class. In order for a triangle to be constructed, the sum of the smaller sides must be greater than the larger side. So when we look at the two smaller sides, we add those together, it has to be bigger than the long longest side. We actually lead into what's called the triangle inequality theorem, which says the sum of the lengths of any two sides of a triangle must be greater than the length of the third. <clears throat> the easiest way to check is just going to be to add the two shorter sides. Because definitely if you add the longest side with another side, it's going to be longer than any of the other two sides. So make sure and add those two shorter sides together and make sure it's going to be bigger than that third side. So just kind of a way to set this up in a little formula. We have S sub 1 and S sub 2 greater than L. S sub 1 and S sub 2 are the two shorter sides in the three lengths. And then L is the longest side. So when we add those two together, it has to be bigger than that longest side. So here we have some practice. If you want to go ahead and pause here and uh, answer these questions first, then um, we'll come back and answer them together. So here we're determining if the three lengths make a triangle or not, and then we're going to classify by sides as either scalene, isosceles, or equilateral. So 8, 9, and 10 are the lengths that we're given. To determine if they make a triangle, we're going to add the two smaller sides together. So the two smaller ones are 8 and 9. When we add those together, we get 17. 17 is bigger than that third side. So yes, these will make a triangle. And because none of the sides are equal, it's scalene. For number 2, the two smaller sides are the 1 and 1. So those are the ones that we're going to add together. 1 plus 1 is equal to that third side of 2. And that's not bigger, so this is actually a no. And when we don't make a triangle, we can't classify it. We can't classify a triangle that doesn't exist. It's not possible to make a triangle with, for example, one marker, one marker, and then two other markers. 6, 10, and 6 for number 3. The two smaller sides are the two 6s, so we're going to add those together. 6 plus 6 is 12, and 12 is bigger than 10. So if 12 is bigger than 10, it's a yes. Because we have two sides that are congruent, we know this triangle is isosceles. For number 4, we have 5, 3, and 7. The two smaller sides are the 5 and the 3. Add those together, we get 8. 8 is bigger than 7, so that's a yes. All three of the sides are different, and so it's a scalene triangle. In number 5, we have 4, 4, and 4. So which ones are the two smaller ones? Well, when we have uh, lengths that are the same, you just get to pick 2. So pick 2 of the 4. So 4 plus 4 is 8. 8 is bigger than 4. So that's a yes. And because they're all equal, we know that this would, would be an equilateral triangle. In number 6, we have 15, 34, and 20. 15 and 20 are the two smaller sides here. 15 plus 20 is 35. 35 is bigger than 34. So that's a yes. All of the sides are different, so that is scalene. In number 7, we have 5, 14, and 7. 5 and 7 are the two smaller sides. That's 12. 12 is smaller than 14. The sum has to be bigger, and so this one is a no. When it's not a triangle, you're not going to have a classification. Again, we cannot classify a triangle that doesn't exist. Okay, here, which of the following could not be a value of n? Go ahead and pause and answer this question. 
In this problem, we have different answer choices that are possibilities to be that third side in this triangle with given sides of 9 and 13. We know the two smaller sides have to add to be bigger than the third. So we can place each one of these as a substitute for n and see if they work. Well, if 7 was n, then the two smaller sides would be 7 and 9, and 7 plus 9 is 16, which is bigger than 13. So 7 would be a possible value for n. Looking at g, g is 10. If 10 was our value for n, then 9 and 10 would be the two smaller numbers, and 9 plus 10 is 19, which is bigger than 13. So 10 also works. We want the one that would not work. If n was 13, well, we would just pick one of the 13s to be the smaller, and 9 and 13 would be the smallest ones. So 9 plus 13 is 22. So 22 is bigger than 13. So that would also work. For answer choice J, we have 22. If 22 was N's value, 22 would actually be the longest side, which would make 13 and 9 the two shorter sides. And when we add those together, it equals 22. The two smaller sides are supposed to add together to be bigger than the larger side. So if it's equal, that's not going to work. And so our answer choice that work that does not work for the triangle is 22. Now, it's worth noting we had three answers that did work. So it's not just one definite answer for a value of n here. There's actually a range of values that we could use for that missing length. When the lengths of two sides of a triangle are known, the third side could be any length in a range of values. You can use the triangle inequality theorem to determine the range of possible lengths for the third side. So here's another example when we have 3 and 5. 7 is a possible answer. Uh, 3 and 5 would be the two shorter sides, and they add to be 8, which is bigger than 7. Or 3 is a possible value for that missing length, because 3 and 3 would be the shorter sides, and they add together to give you 6, which is larger than 5. So let's talk about how we would determine what range of values we would have. In this example, we're given two sides of a triangle that are 3 and 7. What range of numbers would be possible for the length of the third side? Well, we actually have two separate cases that would occur for this example, 3 and 7 could be the two shorter sides where we're missing the longest length. Well, we have that triangle inequality theorem that says the two shorter sides have to add to be bigger than that longest side. So if 3 and 7 are the two shorter ones, that would be our S sub 1 and our S sub 2. So I'm going to be replacing the S sub 1 and S sub 2 with 3 and 7. Then I can just combine my 3 and 7 and have 10 is greater than the longest side. Well, what that really means is that my longest side has to be less than 10. So the largest side has to be less than 10 in order for the lengths to create a triangle. So in order to be less than 10, we could have 9, we could have 8, we could have 7. Well, how low could we possibly get to? So then we have to consider case 2, where 7 is then the longest side, and we're missing one of the shorter sides. So then, using the triangle inequality theorem, I'm now missing one of my shorter sides and using 7 for the longest side. I could subtract 3 from both sides of that inequality and have that that second shorter side is greater than 4. That means that the missing short side has to be bigger than 4 in order for the lengths to create a triangle. So when I'm counting down uh, from 10, because I know my values have to be less than 10, but also they have to be bigger 
than 4. So that possible range for that third side is bigger than 4 but less than 10. All right, in this example, I want you guys to do this on your own. If two sides of a triangle are 9 and 20, what range of numbers would be possible for the length of the third side? Consider those two cases. 